In this problem, we'll be looking at molecular orbital diagrams, which are also called correlation diagrams. These show how the electrons in two separate atoms can combine in order for those two atoms to form a molecule. As such, we use the electronic structure of the two atoms to build up the electronic structure of the molecule as a whole. So for this problem, we want to use a correlation diagram to determine whether or not a Be2 or dibaryllium molecule is a stable structure. So as mentioned, in order to determine the electronic structure of the molecule, first we need to determine the structure of each beryllium atom. So here we have a periodic table. First of all, we have to just find out where beryllium is. So it's right there. As we can see, beryllium is in the second row, so we have to build up its electronic structure from the top row going down. So if we start at the top row, we're looking at our 1s row. That includes hydrogen and helium. So beryllium, in order to get there, we have to start 1s. And since there are two atoms that are in this row, each of which represents one electron, we're going to start with 1s2. After that we can go down to the 2s row. This also has two atoms leading up to beryllium. So beryllium is now 1s2 and 2s. And since it's the second entry of the two, it's going to be 2s2 as well. So the beryllium atom's electronic structure is 1s2, 2s2 for a total of four electrons. So with that in mind, now we can begin to construct our correlation diagram. So a correlation diagram displays the relative energies of atomic orbitals and then shows how they can combine to create molecular orbitals with different energies. And this will tell us whether or not a bond will form between two atoms. So since we're talking energies here, we'll start with our energy axis, and then we'll lay out on the x-axis the positions of our two beryllium atoms. And when these combine, they're going to form a Be2 molecule. Now we need to consider again the electronic structure of each individual beryllium atom, which is 1s2, 2s2, and then we need to place those individual atomic orbitals along this energy axis. So we can start with our 1s atomic orbitals, which are our lowest energy atomic orbitals, and place them at equal energies to each other since it's the same atom. If electrons from these two atomic orbitals combine to form a bonding molecular orbital, called 1 sigma g in this case, then that will lower the energy of the system and therefore foster the creation of a molecule. However, once that molecular orbital is filled up, electrons can go from the atomic orbitals into an antibonding 1 sigma u star molecular orbital, which will destabilize the bond and not foster the creation of a molecule. We can do the same thing with our 2s atomic orbitals, which combine to form the 2 sigma g bonding molecular orbital and the 2 sigma u star antibonding molecular orbital. And the sigmas, the subscripts u and g, and the position of a star are all explained in the text. But for our purposes, we care about that main number, the 1 and the 2, which shows the relative energy level, and the star, which shows whether or not it's bonding, in which case there is no star, or antibonding, in which case there is a star. So now that we have this structure filled out, we can begin to place the electrons from our atoms into the atomic orbitals as seen here. Now each beryllium atom has two electrons in its 1s and 2s atomic orbitals, so these are filled. Once these are filled up, we take our atomic orbital electrons and we push them into our molecular orbital electrons, building from the bottom up, following Hund's rule and the Aufbau principle. So first we push these two into the 1 sigma g molecular orbital, but then we still have two on the outside that need to go to the inside, so they have to go to this antibonding molecular orbital. The same logic applies for the 2s atomic orbitals. Their electrons are going to go down into the 2 sigma g bonding orbital, and then up into the 2 sigma u star antibonding orbital. Based on all this, we can create our electronic structure for the Be2 molecule. So for a Be atom, it was 1s2, 2s2, whereas for a Be2 molecule, it's 1 sigma g2, 1 sigma u star 2, 2 sigma g2, and 2 sigma u star 2. We can then use that information to determine what the bond order is for this molecule. So again, here's our molecular electronic structure for the Be2 molecule, and we're going to look at the bond order, which represents the strength of the bond between the two atoms. So bond order is defined as the number of electrons that exist in bonding molecular orbitals minus the number of electrons that exist in antibonding molecular orbitals. So if we focus first on those bonding molecular orbitals, those are the ones without the star. So 1 sigma g and 2 sigma g, each of which has 
two electrons in them, giving us a total of four electrons in bonding molecular orbitals. Next, we'll consider the number of electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals, or the ones that have the little stars next to them. Those also each have two electrons in them, and there are two of them, giving us four electrons in antibonding molecular orbitals. And if we take the difference between these two things, we come up with a bond order of zero. This means that there is no bond between the two beryllium atoms, and therefore Be2 is not a stable molecule. For every electron that's added to a bonding orbital that stabilizes the bond, there's another electron with the exact opposite amount of energy that is going to destabilize the bond, thereby not fostering the formation of a molecule. So in summary, if we want to use a correlation diagram to determine whether or not a molecule is stable, we first determine the electronic structure of the atoms that are involved, in this case 1s2, 2s2 for beryllium. We then construct and fill in our correlation diagram in order to determine what our electronic structure is for the molecule. And then we subtract the antibonding electrons from the bonding electrons to calculate our bond order, which in this case was zero, meaning that a bond did not exist between these two atoms, and therefore no molecule exists.